Hello, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to build this, a 5 inch FPV drone for just $100. Despite its really low price, this thing is still capable of getting some really great shots once you put a GoPro on it. Here's a quick short clip of one of my flights with this drone. This $100 5 inch build is one of the cheapest ways you can carry a full size GoPro on a drone. So if all you care about is getting some really great quality footage for the cheapest price possible, you may be interested in building this $100 5 inch drone. Also because of its price, this drone build is a good idea for people who really really like just building a lot of drones like me, and so you want to build as many drones as possible for the least amount of money. I enjoy building drones a lot, so it's pretty satisfying to build a fully functional 5 inch drone for just 100 bucks. This drone definitely isn't going to be the best performing 5 inch drone build in the world, but it's going to be one of the cheapest. So let's get started by taking a closer look at all the parts we're going to use for this $100 5 inch drone build. For the frame, we're going for the Mark IV 5 inch frame. This costs just around $14 on AliExpress, and I'm going to put all the links to all these parts in the description below. Side note, if you aren't seeing the prices that I'm showing here, then you might not be looking at it during one of AliExpress's sale periods. AliExpress typically runs sales on the first week of the month, that's the choice day sale, as well as in the third week of the month. And so usually those sale periods are the best times to buy the parts since they're going to be at their lowest prices. Also, once you look at a part, it might show up later in the super deals section of the app for an even lower price. For the motors, we're going for these red bottom 2205 motors, mainly for the price they can be had for just $15 for the full set of four motors. That's probably the cheapest set of four motors you can find anywhere. These are a little bit of a blast from the past. These red bottom motors were really popular maybe eight or so years ago. They've disappeared from the market for a while, but it seems like a factory has restarted production of them, and they've been pumping out these motors for a really, really low price. These motors definitely aren't as powerful as today's more modern 5-inch motors, but for just carrying a GoPro around and cruising around, I think these motors are going to do just fine. For the flight controller stack, we're going for the generic F405 V3S stack with a 45 amp ESC. These come in a bunch of different brand names, but in general, the pinouts are all the same between them, so it doesn't really matter which one you choose. When on sale, you can generally find these for around $33. For our analog camera, we're going for this generic 1800 TVL camera, which can be found for just $9. Now, if you do have a little bit more wiggle room in your budget, this is the one part I do recommend upgrading. Spending the extra 10 bucks to get a Phoenix 2 or a Rattel 2 is highly recommended. While this analog camera costs just $9, you kind of do get what you pay for, and especially with the lens, there is a lot of distortion in the lens, which can make it difficult to fly. For the video transmitter, we're going for this Solo Good or Cyclone 1 Watt VTX. It costs $20 and it includes the antenna as well. If this VTX isn't available, I also recommend the SpeedyB TX800, which can be found for around $25 or $30. Bucks. For our RC radio protocol, we're going for Express LRS, so either the SpeedyB Express LRS receiver or the GAGMCU receiver can be found for around $9. Either one will do just fine. Those are all the parts you need to build this 5-inch FPV drone for just $100. But if you're brand new to this hobby and you still need some supporting equipment, let's quickly go through these right now. The batteries we want for this drone are 4S 1500mAh LiPos. These are a really popular size of LiPo, so they should be available everywhere for pretty cheap. For transmitter, I recommend the Radio Master Pocket for $60. Remember to get the Express LRS version, and it requires two 18650 batteries. For analog goggles, we're going for genuine Eshin EV800D goggles. These cost around $100, and I think they're the best value for your money when it comes to video performance. Also, instead of wearing them as goggles, you can use them in monitor mode, as you see here, which is the way I like to use them mounted on a tripod. Soldering is going to be the most challenging part of any FPV drone build, so it's important to have a really good soldering iron. I recommend a computerized iron like the pine cell I'm showing here, as well as the TS100. Anyways, that's it for all the parts we need. Now let's get on to the build. The first step of the build, and in my opinion the most fun part of the build, is to assemble the frame. Most of these cheap frames don't actually come with assembly instructions, so it's really up to you to figure out which parts go together with which screws. Thankfully these Mark IV frames are pretty simple, so it doesn't take too much to put them together. I recommend pulling up the AliExpress listing and using the assembled photos as a reference to figure out which parts go where. In addition, I'm starting a second YouTube channel where I'm going to upload more boring and random videos, such as the full assembly video for this frame, so if you get stuck, you can go reference and watch the video in real time of me assembling this frame. Anyways, with the frame all assembled, the next step is to dry fit the ESC onto the frame so you can figure out where the capacitor and the battery leads are going to go. 
This is a pretty roomy build with a lot of space in the back of the frame, so I'm just mounting the capacitor and the battery leads straight out the back of the ESC. The battery leads are going to be the biggest soldering job for this build, so it's going to be the most difficult. Make sure you use a large soldering tip in order to make sure you get good heat transfer between the iron and the battery pads. Next, it's time to start screwing things onto the frame. Building custom FPV drones requires a lot of M3 screws, so if you don't already have a bunch laying around, then I really recommend picking up an M3 screw assortment kit. For the flight stack, our frame actually came with 30mm long screws, but I think they're a little bit too long, so I dug out 25mm screws instead. The motors come with 8mm long screws, but with the arm guards, those are actually too short, so I had to use 10mm long M3 screws instead to mount the motors. Mounting the $9 analog camera was a little bit of a headache. A standard analog micro camera should be 19mm wide, and our frame is exactly 19mm wide, which is great. However, our camera came in at 19.6mm wide, so it was out of tolerance. That's what you get for buying a $9 analog camera. To fix this, I had to get some sandpaper out and shave down the sides of the camera in order to shave it down to be exactly 19mm wide. There's a chance that the camera you received is going to be properly in tolerance, but if you want to avoid the hassle, I'd recommend just getting the Rotel 2 or Phoenix 2 camera instead. Now that the camera is 19mm wide, we can screw it into the frame using the included M2 screws. Next, it's time to mount our video transmitter. And our video transmitter doesn't come with any screws at all, so I had to use my own 12mm long M3 screws. At this point in the build, I noticed that the drone had kind of a red theme going on, and the blue soft mount gummies on the VTX was kind of clashing with that theme, so I decided to take off the blue gummies and replace them with red soft mount gummies. These gummies are available on AliExpress in big packs for just a couple bucks. Next, I finished mounting all four of the motors in preparation for the next step of the build. It's time to solder the motors onto the ESC. Most FPV motors come with silicone coated wires with nice pre-tin conductors. Unfortunately, these $15 motors have to save costs somewhere, so they come with PVC coated wires, and the conductors themselves are just bare copper. This makes them a little bit more challenging to solder to, but you can be rest assured that if you can solder to these motors, you can solder to any FPV motors in the future. The PVC coating on these wires burns up a little bit once you add heat to it, and the bare copper is a little bit more difficult for the solder to stick to. What I recommend doing is that before cutting the motor wire short to the exact length needed, is that you can just practice soldering on the bare ends until you get a better feel of how the wire reacts to the heat. In order to tidy up the motor wires on the frame, I'm using some fabric tape to tape the wires down. The official name for this tape is called Acetate Cloth Electrical Tape. Another tip I have for soldering these motor wires is to pre-tin the pads on the ESC, which means applying solder to just the pads alone and letting the solder flow evenly on the pad. Then do the same for the motor wires, just melt a little bit of solder at the end of the motor wires. After that, it's easy to bring the motor wire to the pad and melt the two together. Next, it's time to test the soldering connections with a smoke stopper. If there's a short in the connections, the smoke stopper will buzz an alarm and also prevent most of the current from flowing through, which will save the stack from frying. Looks like we're all in the clear here. That's it for the ESC, so next, let's mount up the flight controller and get working on all the accessories. Take the Express LRS receiver and solder the included wires to the pads. Take the other ends of the wires and solder them to UART6 on the flight controller. I'll be putting the full wiring diagram for this build in the video description below, so you can use it as a reference when soldering. Next, it's time to solder the video transmitter to the flight controller. Note that there are voltage selection pads on the flight controller, so you can choose to power your VTX with either 9 volts or the full battery power. You do this by making a solder bridge to the appropriate pad. I'm choosing to bridge the 9 volt pads. Finally, it's time to solder the camera to the flight controller. This also has voltage selection pads. You can choose to power the camera with either 5 volts or 9 volts. I'm choosing the 5 volt option. And that's it. That's all the soldering complete. You can bring the smoke stopper out again to test for shorts. Just make sure your flight controller and ESC are connected together. With the physical part of the build done, next it's time to set up the software in Betaflight. This beta flight setup takes a lot of time and it's kind of boring, so I'm going to be uploading the entire process on my second YouTube channel, and I'll link to it in the description below. Anyways, let's pretend that's all done, so it's time to put the finishing touches on the build. FPV drones create a lot of vibrations, which can cause screws that are threaded in metal to vibrate out. To fix this, use blue thread locker on any screw that threads into metal. For props, I'm going for these 5-inch HQ Prop V3S props. Remember to install them in the correct directions or else the drone will flip out of control. And here is our completed 5 inch FPV drone build. I gotta say, I think it looks pretty decent for a build on such a tight budget. The wires sticking out of the ESC are a little messy, but I didn't want to route them on the inside because of the weak PVC insulation on the wires. But besides that, I think it looks pretty good. 
It's a nice day out at the pond, so it's time to take the budget 5-inch drone out for a flight. Alright, for this flight, the big main video feed is from the GoPro Hero 8, and the smaller one on the bottom right is the analog goggle view, which is the video feed that I'm seeing when I'm flying. This budget 5-inch drone feels a lot different in the air than a modern 5-inch freestyle drone. The modern freestyle motors are designed for crazy power and acceleration in order to do all the freestyle tricks, but that's at the expense of efficiency. On the other hand, this budget 5-inch build with old-school red bottom motors, it doesn't nearly have as much thrust or acceleration, but it does make up for it in power efficiency. So this build can easily get over 7 minutes of flight time with the GoPro on it, while all my other modern builds can only get around 5 minutes. So while this drone won't be ideal for stunt flying, it's more than enough for cruising around with the GoPro. Also, when I first flew this drone, I was thrown off a little by the field of view. I'm used to flying with a wide 150 degree field of view like from the Rotel 2 or Phoenix 2 cameras, but this $9 analog camera, instead it has a narrower about 120 degree field of view. Uh, it's kind of like if you've ever played a video game with a field of view slider, if you mess around with it, the game itself doesn't really change, but your muscle memory has to adapt to the different view you have of the game and you feel a little bit thrown off. And it's the same with this camera, the narrow field of view just makes me feel like the drone is farther forward in the real world than it actually is. It's not a huge deal after a few minutes of getting used to it, but I definitely wouldn't want to try to do any precise gaps or precise maneuvers with this narrow field of view. Overall, this budget 5-inch drone has a few drawbacks, but I think it's still a good value for the money spent on it. I'll link all the parts I used in this build in the description below. To get to the coveted $100 price point, we usually have to wait for AliExpress to run their sales, which they run about twice a month. The first week of the month is the Choice Day sale, and then in the middle of the month, they usually run some other kind of site-wide sale. And if you look at the right times, you can snag all of these parts on the sale for really, really cheap. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you aren't already subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.